Yeah? Yeah, yeah, that's it. Make a jig, mate. It's a get a Robin's jig. So I've come here today to join Daniel Cox. He's working with a friend called Tim. Tim has built a sound studio. Very unusual looking place. There isn't a square corner in it. It all seems to be different dimensions, but apparently that's part of a science of acoustics. It's a um, brick building. We've done a side and a back extension. Yeah. Fairly conventional. We've put a garage on the side with a bedroom on top. Concrete on the outside. Uh, ultimately, we wanted as much concrete as possible to stop sound. The inner skin we built up, which was a mistake, we built up thermalite. Mm. Um, we've used acoustic wall ties in between to stop sound transmission. With those two goals, we want to stop the sound transmitting and we want to make it airtight to stop airborne sound uh, yeah, yeah. getting to the house. Okay. So the construction of the walls, the insulation that needed the U value, so we ended up using sound insulation and thermal insulation have maybe different properties. So we used a, a thermal insulation to get that. Yeah. I think once the makeup of the wall was all done, we'd probably get the thermal insulation we needed. We didn't have those designs together at the time. On the inside of it, we've then built a completely separate room within the room, which is a timber frame construction, isolated from the outside. You say you had a freestanding wall, which is what? What's that built from? Timber stud or what? It's 45 mil square, the timber stud, isn't it? It's all 2 by 2 stud work, and it's at big centres. Normally, when we build a wall, you want to make like 400 centres and loads of noggins in, so it's really rigid, but on this wall, it's actually quite flexible. When we had it up, I was thinking, this is not be very strong as such. It's like a floppy old bookshelf, isn't it? It's about there, isn't it? Back there somewhere. Right, that's it. You can get the safe like that. It's quite rare, I need a three metre one really, yeah. so... Do you link them sometimes? I've, I've got another one in the event to join them together. But you don't bother. Um, but what a couple of chapters said, it depends what you're cutting really, I'm normally only cutting MDF. Yeah. If you... Um, if you get just a straight edge, I've got like a long metal straight edge, oh, yeah. if you cramp that down and then just put the guard rail out and then move it over one. Gotcha, yeah. Because yeah. I think a lot of the guard rails, I've got say, the, the joiner, but it's not dead straight. No, no. You know, it's not. Okay, that's a good idea. The other thing I see on some forums, people was cutting material with uh, the three metre one and the material's moving once they've cut it. Yeah. So they've, they've like done the cut and it's just like moved in the material. Yeah, I know, yeah. yeah. And then another, he said a brand new three metre and it's got a kink in it. So, oh, really? you know, you'd be fuming, wouldn't you, buying a, yeah, yeah. I don't know how much a three metre is, but well, they're not. Fest, fest all funny. You know, they're not too cheap. It's a second mortgage. <laughs> Can you see that on the camera? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it will move. The yeah, the whole thing. And that's yeah. what we want, we don't, yeah. you know. Um, it was quite frightening initially to see that, but th yeah. that's, that's all part of it, yeah. uh, for the isolation. It just seems crazy to me, the wobbly wall, but that's, you know, normally we put loads of noggins in. To think you build, it's got to be quite yeah. sturdy, where this is uh, yeah. the total opposite. This is the exact setup what we've got. We've got a 2x2 two two batten, it's about 10 mil off of the um, block work. And then we've got these brackets, all the rubber on screwed through. And then a bit of top hat on now. And again, we put these in at a little bit over 600 centres, where normally you'd put them in at 400 or quite less for something quite rigid. But yeah, so we've got these all horizontal and then all the boards went up usual. We've got 15 mil acoustic plasterboard and then a six mil tech sound, it's called. I don't know if you've ever come across that. We had great fun putting it up, we ended up wearing it, but it was a, it's like a massive sheet of blue tack. It's kind of self-adhesive. It'll stick it, it'll stretch it out when you're trying to get it on. So it was it was a palaver getting it up. Wow. But, um, so that goes on over the top of that acoustic plasterboard? Yeah. 
and then, then another layer of acoustic plasterboard. The plasterboard makeup is 36 mil plus the oh, plaster on top. Yeah, yeah. All fixed onto this, onto one of these, isolated from the cavity wall. Is that a skimmed, is it? Skimmed, yeah, that? just skimmed, yeah. Is that a special plaster or just the ordinary plaster? Uh, just, this is just ordinary plaster. Yeah. I'll, I'll say before we did that, we sealed it all up. Bottles and bottles of this stuff, just absolutely everywhere. On every layer, just keep sealing it, make, so make an no airtight. Air Two things that I've learned to consider are the airborne noise and the impact noise. Right. Things like the impact things are, are transmitting physically through a material yeah. and the, the air one is like sounds yeah. like as we're hearing it in in yeah in the air and so if you seal something up the airborne noise is harder to escape from my point of view i'm hitting a drum yeah not only is the it's the sound of the drum like traveling out through the air but it's also like the the impact of it is going down into the floor and then that might travel through the walls and it's something i looked at building was mm. a control room and a live room where I might, in my situation, set up a drum kit in a live room. It maybe didn't work for me because then I'd like to go into the control room, but naturally the control room might be where I spend a lot of time on the computer, kind of editing, making music, playing other instruments. And for the drums, I'm not, I, I like to have a nice big space around me. If I'm at the computer most of the time, sat in a little control room, then it, it doesn't, didn't, that didn't sort of seem natural, which is why we came to the conclusion to, to sort of build one space. Yeah. As, a, as a production space, really. Yeah. I noticed that you haven't got square corners in this room, and mm. I don't think that's just because you wanted to be eccentric. Is, <laughs> there, is there an actual real benefit yeah. in sound? I don't necessarily think we've built the ideal space. There's two things we wanted to achieve. Part of the soundproofing, the sound reduction is a better way of looking at it for me because there's no such thing as soundproofing. No, really, it's, yeah, yeah, we're, yeah, we're trying to bring it down to a more acceptable level. Yeah. One way of doing that is, is creating a lobby where you have two doors. And in fact, I've learned that a, a couple of normal doors might actually be a better solution than one single acoustic oh, okay. door. So long as you've got a sealed air gap between yeah. the two. We wanted to create a lobby, so naturally that's the door through to the house. By cutting that corner off, we lose some of the angles and we created that lobby. And we've got a double layer on the glass and the windows. This is acoustic glass. You know, the more you look into it, you can just get thicker and thicker until, you know, you've got like shop front or yeah. airport glass but or again, something. we're talking about density, aren't we? Because, yeah. Because building materials to resist sound, they've got to be dense. That's right. Which is why you're saying about the thermal light blocks weren't the best choice in terms no. of cutting down on sound. They gave you thermal insulation. Yeah, exactly. And yeah. like looking back on it now, I'd much rather have built like a double skin out of concrete um, or even stuck the blocks on the side to get more, yeah, you yeah, know, we I could know. have done that. Yeah. We've had an acoustic specialist design this space, a chap called Nick Whitaker. We've got a ratio of three to five to seven. The numbers don't sort of divide into each other. <laughs> and oh, okay. don't create um, a build-up of um, sound waves, basically. The difficult one is the ceiling and the floor. It's difficult to um, not to have that parallel surface. And mm. We're going to put a lot of treatment on the ceiling to cut down on the reflections bouncing yeah. in between. So you've got concrete, you've got block and beam, which is fairly unusual for a first floor. You've got all those craned up there, did you? Well, yeah, it sits on the outside skin, the block and beam, which oh, is... It? unconventional and then the inside skin is again isolated so it doesn't reach up to the top what we were going to do is um, ha suspend the ceiling from the block and beam with joist hangers in the end we realized that to get the thermal insulation we needed we needed a certain depth and we were able to fit joists across and we managed to get it in between where the blocks sit in the beams you've got a bit more height so we actually ran joists across still isolated so then the joists aren't touching the block and beam and then underneath the joists again we've got the same makeup that we were looking at earlier with the suspended resilient bar plasterboard a tech sound and plasterboard again and then skimmed the doors this little button that as it shuts it drops the rubber oh, down is that how it seals works? it airtight it's very resonant in there because it's a funny shape. Ah. Now, that could be counterproductive if we don't treat it. Whatever frequency that's resonating at in there, if we're producing that in here, that will also resonate with it. And then oh, on the other side of it, you get some really weird sounds. This so, sound engineer of yours, is he coming back here with some instruments and measuring things or not? I, yeah, it, he's, um, I don't know how he does it actually, but he's gonna come back and he'll then do some tuning and listen oh. to the speakers once they're set up and maybe make some um, adjustments. So yeah, he's, he's got another, an, another day to do coming back. And I got in touch with him uh, early on 
and we had an architect, I had an acoustic consultant. Mm. And that was actually very difficult because okay. from an architect's point of view, this is a house, you know, yeah, it's, sure. not, it's yeah. not like a commercial no. premises. So from an architect, we're doing an extension, we're building a house. From a sound point of view, we're sort of looking at opposites. You know, the architect's very interested in the thermal insulation and that might be the opposite to what the sound, you know, the sound insulation might actually yeah. not do so well for the, for the thermal. My guess is that by the time you've put that wall up, and you've got <laughs> an air gap in that wall, which is totally sealed, yeah. and you've got a, a cavity wall, you're pretty covered on both fronts. I believe so, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, don't, I don't think it's going to be a cold building when you... No, And you've got underfloor heating as well, haven't you, as well? We've got underfloor heating yeah. in here, yeah. The other side of it for me is right, like right now we can hear the resonance in here. I find that a bit annoying, like, yeah, sure. like yeah. I'm maybe more aware of resonance because yeah. like, I sit and listen to it, but um, by controlling the sound in here, it's going to suddenly feel like a, a sort of a lot more intimate space. <laughs> These are going to have all the rock wall in them at different areas, so it's just going to sit against the wall with rock wall in and then Tim will get it covered up with some material to make it look better. Um, some other ones have got some very heavy uh, what is that, Tim? That massive vinyl. Vinyl. So we're going to hang vinyl down in it, and it weighs five kilos a metre or something. So it's very heavy. Hang that down in the corner. So you want the corners cut off? Is that for sound as well, Tim? So the sound corners are where the issues come with bass. Um, I think yeah. bass build up or bass. Yeah. Maybe. Uh, Which is why they do those curved walls, isn't it? Curved acoustic yeah, walls. Yeah, I think so. I mean, you get some weird kind of. Uh, sonic artifacts, I don't know if that's a, yeah. a phrase, but uh, from... Well, it's, it's a strange thing, isn't it? Because they've gone, they've built concert halls, mm. and then people say to you, the acoustics in that hall are terrible. You yeah, know? yeah. Well, I know a sound engineer, he does stuff of, in fact, he used to do the three tenors concert, you know, and he did like Pavarotti, yeah. so yeah. he was hired, he works for the BBC, does all kinds of things, strictly all that kind of stuff, but he says, you know, some of the buildings you go in, he said, never go for a concert in Wembley Arena. We discussed this this morning. Because yeah. of the roof there. It yeah. just, it just it's it's like lost. corrugated. Yeah. It's horrible. horrendous. Yeah. yeah, that's interesting that you brought up Wembley. Because I've, 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 I couldn't believe it, actually. I've, I've been to a concert there and I thought, you know, the reflections that I was hearing yeah, yeah. the sound. So, it's uh, awful. And when, yeah. I, I worked on a few pop festivals back in the, uh, oh, back yeah. in the day when I was younger, you know, Isla White and so on. Mm. And one of the things there was putting speakers halfway through the crowd, like mm. they build a tower, put yeah. speakers delay, there. Delay towers, yeah. Exactly that, delayed sound, because yeah. otherwise you get that awful thing where it's, yeah. so you, you want to push it a bit further, but you've got to actually time it so that Yeah, you've got to time out. align it to, to yeah. meet up with the, yeah. with the sound it's, that's travelling from the it? stage. It's yeah. really weird. And sound is actually, travels quite slowly, doesn't yeah. it, really? Yeah. You know, it's only 750 miles an hour, which is, you know, I can go ah, faster than on my bike. This is an acoustic wall tyre, yeah? Yeah, it's made by a company called Christian Grey. Yeah. And um, I think they're sort of fairly conventional parts and it's got rubber in between yeah. and a bolt and it, it just isolates it. Um, and you can sort of feel it. Got it. You yeah. know, you, yeah. you can feel, feel, feel the movement in it. Yeah, yeah. They're very expensive. I don't know what a realistic difference it's going to make to me versus the cost of the actual tyres for the whole, you know. Because yeah. you can sort of just keep spending and spending. The bit where you blew most of the money is on the carpenter. <laughs> We designed something we couldn't afford, basically, like ambitious with it. And so it became sort of a self build. And we were lucky enough to meet a good ground worker who then has kind of put us in touch with, with Dan. And, oh, right. Sounds like, good. from the ground up, everybody. Exactly, yeah, the ground Everybody were, recommended everybody else. That's, that's how it went, yeah. And, and it just like finding, you know, f finding people that you can work with in that yeah. way, that, that's how it's, it's come together. Otherwise, we'd, we'd have. We'd have we sat, we sat on the plans a couple of years. Yeah, yeah, 12.36. 12.36. Oh, that's right then. 12.40, yeah, sorry. Yeah, 12.30, that's right, yeah. So that's it there, overall. Got me 18 times table on the camera. <laughs> so I'll cut that back 18 mil. That's, that's it going to be there. And then they'll just sail through it. Yeah, but, fix it right. Too. Now, if I put that angle on that one, mm -hmm. 
and we've still got 100 mil in there then for the yeah, 100 mil exactly. to go through. Yeah. So they lined, they've gone back a bit then. So that's how we were all there. Yeah, you're right. But as long as we still got our 1200 between the two. Do you want a 1200, because um, we're going to need the, mm. why don't we cut some 12 like we did for that yeah. one? Yeah, then we can yeah use so I think that's currently there like that. 1200 in between, there's still 1200 in between, and then we've got that one over there. But this is Stanley, Tim's ruined his one, he's only had it since Christmas. Oh really? Tough on tape. Yeah, that's it. That'll be the front angle's now changed. Yeah, it yeah. is. I'm good about there. But it's going to be about here. Right, that's it there then, yeah? Let's cut that shelf in at that then. Yeah? Yeah. That's close enough. Yeah. This, right. this angle's slightly different now because. That's... Right, I'm going to cut that there. Yeah. All the way down there. Oh, yeah, of course, because it's going through. Yeah, you got it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think the tech sound was worse. Oh, that was terrible. Here's the tech sound. This is what's in between the plasterboard. This has been left outside a little bit, so um, mm. it's got a bit funny, but it sort of looks like this, and it's self-adhesive. So we stuck it on, so the whole walls, sort of, that you'll see on the picture, but the whole walls look like that, all the way around, it's acoustic ceiling, ceiling as well. Uh, difficulty is when you put it on the ceiling, it just wants to fall off, even with, this, even with the glue on it. Really, I mean, this is adding mass. The point of this stuff is yeah. to make the wall denser without yeah. loads of thickness. Heavier. It's heavier, yeah, we're adding yeah. mass to the walls, yeah, and then the yeah. plasterboard goes on it. So the reflection, any reflection that comes off it like this yeah. is lost again once we cover it all up. What was interesting is while, while we built it, as it started out, it was all brick. And it was very resonant, like really boomy and echoey. Yeah. And then as we got the timber frame up, we filled, it was a 50 mil cavity, so we filled it with 50 mil acoustic rock wall, sorry. Yeah. Um, and when the whole room was covered in acoustic rock wall, and this, uh, like it was, it was eerily dead, it was, it was too dead, it was uncomfortable. Yeah, yeah. And whereas it wasn't controlling the bass frequencies, as much as the top frequency was really, really dead, so it, kind of, it felt, felt very unnatural, even though it was very dead. And um, yeah, as a space to be in, it was like, and to perform in, for example, it was, it was very uncomfortable. Um, whereas what we're trying to do is, is balance it. And thus these, these corner traps we're building where we're gonna hang something similar to this that would just kind of flap and absorb low end and try and balance. Like, like an acoustic curtain, really. Exactly, yeah. Put 45 on the MDF, and uh, one tip I've seen on the old uh, social media, put the, the parallel guide in there, and it just helps push down. New tube of sealant. Dobbing now. And this end here's got the bigger hole in, so I've got a little bit of wobble room. Yeah, we have a solid fixing. There we have our six fixings ready to lift the MDF box straight up and fix it to them. You're gonna have to backflip out of that, mate. There we go. Here we have our MDF boxes. Ready to take all the insulation and the, the soundproofing. So. Corner base traps. The corner base traps. So here we have one done, we've got rock wall here, 100 mil rock wall, and behind that we've got mass loaded vinyl, very heavy vinyl hanging down, 
to absorb all the sounds. When she blows on her 